Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and this is one of a series of short videos I'm doing looking at printing using the Epson ET8550 EcoTank A3 Plus printer. Now, I'll have a full detailed review of this printer in due course, but I've already produced a short video about setting the printer up and in the process of what I'm doing work for the reviewers, I'm going to do a few short videos showing individual types of prints and in this particular example I'm going to be doing a borderless A3 Plus photo print. Now the printer, um, if you don't know it, is different from most that I test in that it actually has separate ink tanks rather than cartridges. Um, that means potentially your print costs are a lot lower. But anyway, let's just have a look at making a simple print with this. Now I'm going to use the feed at the back. Clip that up like that. Now, this has slide adjustments which set for the size. You can load envelopes, you can load all kinds of stuff via the top here. I will be doing another video looking at printing on heavy art papers where I'll use the feed at the back and cover that. Yeah. But this is essentially photo printing. Now I'm using a sheet of A3 Plus or 13 inch by 19 inch uh, paper. It's, as you can see, uh, A3 Plus roughly gives you the size of the printer. But uh, it's pretty simple to load up. Uh, you can put multiple sheets in here for lighter papers, but I wouldn't for photo papers. I'll feed them one at a time. Now, I've put that in there. It's detected it on the front here. Now, I make a point of always setting the paper type and size on the printer as well as on the printer driver. And I'm going to be driving it from a laptop here, an old MacBook. Uh, I'm going to be using the Epson print layout software. One, because it's actually quite good. And two, because on this Mac, I'm using quite an oldish version of Photoshop, which wouldn't be that applicable to people. So if I use Epson print layout, which is it's pretty good, um, that lets me show you that. And also it will probably be the same on Windows PCs as well. But I haven't used a Windows PC this century, so um, all my testing's on a Mac. Anyway, here we go. It's selected paper. It's remembered what I've had before. Uh, premium semi-gloss. Now, there is a relatively limited range of media types on this printer. So you pick whatever is closest to what you're using. Now, I'm going to be using a profile that I made. And I made that using the premium semi-gloss setting for this particular luster paper. So that profile will work for that. If you're using an Epson paper, use the Epson profiles. If you're using a third party paper, then having a profile made or getting a profile from the people you buy your paper from is a good idea. It will make a difference for quality. But anyway, this is set to A3 plus as the paper size and the media type is premium semi-gloss. So we'll just close that, that's it, it's done, it's ready for that. And it's ready to print. And uh, I'll just go over to the laptop. Here I've opened the image in Photoshop and then opened it in Epson print layout. Now I'm going to print this one borderless, uh, not because I like borderless, but just to show that you can do it and uh, there's a few points to make about things to take notice of while you're doing it. Now I'm going to set this, uh, I've set the print quality to high, I've set it to borderless. Um, I'm actually going to print this one at the standard setting. Doesn't make much difference in this instance, but it's always worth checking because as I mentioned with other papers, there is a difference between the quality settings and the kind of output you get. But for photo paper like this, um, Standard just means the image will come out, the print will come out a bit quicker for while I'm doing this. I'm using a standard layout landscape. I'm using the expansion option for borderless and I'll, I'll show you why that when the print is done. Um, I've got scale to fit. I've picked the, pre the um, premium semi-gloss Epson Luster profile that I made earlier and I'm using a perceptual rendering intent. Now the rendering intent does make a difference to images like this with these strong colors. And um, it's definitely worth switching over to relative colorimetric to have a quick look to see whether it looks any better. 
Now, there's no hard and fast rule as to whether perceptual or relative colorimetric works best. It's whatever looks best. You do get a rough soft proof on the screen here. I've also switched on the expansion option so you can see around the edge where the image is being overlapped over the paper size to cover the borderless. So I've pressed print and uh, it's now just a matter of the data coming from the laptop to here. This is connected wirelessly, works absolutely fine, so is the laptop in this instance. I have connected it on Ethernet and by USB, makes no real difference in doing the two there. Takes a little while to process the image because it is quite a large image. Uh, the image here was actually produced to be printed at A2 size and I've just shrunk it to fit. Now I know some people would say you need, that's too many dot per inch or too high a resolution. I like this as well, the way the tray just comes out. But you don't need to worry about it. Print it at whatever resolution you've got and see what it comes out like. The sheet loading seems pretty reliable on this printer. I've not had any problems with it. Uh, thicker papers, however, will need to go via the rear. There is a straight through print path, which I'll show printing on poster board in, a, in another video. But um, this is the straightforward basic photo printing. If I'd got smaller sheets of photo paper, I could have loaded them into one of the cassettes at the front here. So if I was printing six by fours or something, or seven by five small pictures like that, I could just load a stack up here, they'd go through and they'd come out here. But this paper feed path is the one to use for larger, better quality bits. And I can see the print coming out already. Looks fine. There's a little lamp here, a little LED lamp, that uh, just gives you a good look at what's happening. It's not like on the Epson P700, P900, which have a translucent top, clear top, where you can see through and actually see the printing going on. That's nice, but um, this is not bad. If I was printing this at the high quality setting, it would take perhaps three to four times as long to print. It really is quite a bit slower. But for extreme fine detail in pictures, uh, you may be able to notice a difference. I always say, um, do a check when you get a new printer and paper and that. Print an image at the highest quality setting. Print an image at the standard quality setting. Write on the back of them carefully which is which. Put them away overnight, don't look at them. Look at them the next day without reading what's on the back and see if you can genuinely see a difference. If you can't see much of a difference, then don't necessarily bother with the high quality settings unless there's a specific reason you need it. Um, but as I say, be wary of seeing differences because you expect there to be differences. Anyway, the print is done. And there we have boardless A3 Plus print. Now, here's one I did earlier where I didn't use the expansion option. In this, you can probably see, I'm not sure on the video, uh, there is a fine white line along the edge here. Uh, that's because it hasn't quite expanded the image enough. We've got more of the image on that one, but we've got a bit chopped off. But for a borderless print, there we have it on luster paper, luster photo paper. Um, really quite easy to print. And the nice thing is I can look at the ink levels and we've still got gallons of ink left with it. Anyway, hope these uh, videos are of some use. So I will be having a detailed review, a written review and a, a video review of the printer when I've done all different types of testing. But I'm just doing some of these short ones just to show you. So please do subscribe to the channel if you find it useful. Um, it does help and feel free to ask questions. Although if they are what's it like on paper, such and such or something else, you may have to wait for the next video to come out to cover that. Uh, so thank you very much.